So here's something a little different for the channel. Um, this is my homemade press brake. Um, I use this a lot for the parts that I build. Um, so I built this thing, oh, I don't know. This is the second, this is the second one of these I've built. Um, I kind of developed and built the first one um, at an old job I had. Um, and then built the second one for myself. Um, so kind of quick specs, it's, uh, you know, from end to end, it's eight feet. Um, the tonnage on paper is 64 tons, but I think it's probably closer to 50. It uses, uh, it's kind of set up to use the old American standard style tooling. Just has this, uh, kind of a tang, it's half inch wide, uh, I believe five eighths tall. So on the bottom, they just drop in place and in the top, there's a bunch of set screws to pinch it and hold it in place. I don't have a ton of tooling, but I bought, I bought eight feet of this um, in the matching bottom. And then I've got some pieces of this narrow stuff and then I've actually got quite a bit of homemade stuff that's just plasma cut pieces stacked up. Um, and these work surprisingly well and it's cheap. Uh, the real store-bought stuff is expensive. Um, so to power this thing, it runs on, that's kind of hard to see, but it runs on two um, Harbor Freight air-powered uh, engine hoist jacks. That's the main power. Um, I have a garage door spring and an air cylinder for the return. Um, the control system is kind of complicated and I'm actually, this is kind of my third system and I'm getting ready to change it again. I get this cover off. So it's pretty complicated. It's got a whole bunch of valves, um, electric solenoid valves. Um, and I'm not gonna go through explaining this right now because it's a mess, but basically the, you know, I've got this two pedal control. This is ram down and ram up. And I've got a, kind of a lead screw sort of adjuster and then a micro switch down there. And so when you hit the you hit the ram down pedal, it'll go down until it hits that limit switch. <clears throat> and then this basically is my adjustment for how much angle I want. And um, I have it off right now. <clears throat> oh, it's laying right here. But I also have a up travel limit. Um, I was doing a job the other day where I had to use the extreme travel machine and then this just got in the way, but usually I have that here. And so this little flat bar runs with the upper die and we'll hit that on the way down for your bottom limit. And you can come up here for your top limit. Kind of speeds things up if you're doing a bunch of parts so you're not running the machine too far up and, and making a big gap between the dies. So it's been, a, it's been a challenging project. Um, the hardest thing is getting the two sides to come down evenly with each other because it has basically two independent pumps and jacks. Um, it's got this big four inch tube, four inch quarter inch wall tube that kind of acts as like a torsion bar between the two rocker arms to keep it square. But that tube twists easier than you think. Um, and so to combat that, I built this thing. Um, so the, it's got these heim joints, bottom end hooks to this bolt on the back side, and then there's one on the other side. And so then as the machine moves up and down, it, it rotates this bar. And in the back there, 
basically this bar is two pieces. One's connected to this side. This is connected to the other side. And any misalignment will trigger a limit switch and shut off whichever side is going too far. Um, and so that keeps it pretty square. Um, I've actually got a new concept I'm working on right now. I've got a couple more little pieces to build, but it works pretty good, especially for short parts. Like I'm, I'm working on this little stack of parts right here. It does a real good job on shorter, shorter pieces, but when you have a real long piece, um, keeping the angle exactly the same on both sides, it fights you sometimes. That's what I'm working to, working to fix. Um, so these jacks are rated at eight tons. And then there is a four to one ratio built into this rocker. And so 64 tons comes from eight tons here times four is 32. And then there's two of them. But I think they're a little uh, optimistic on their ratings for eight tons out of these guys. But it does a good job. I've bent a lot of parts on this thing. Like I said, uh, this is the second machine I built. This one's not 100% done. I mean, it's, it's ugly. It still needs a lot of finish work. Um, but really, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, it's basically built out of four sheets of 3 16 plate, um, a bunch of like two by two quarter wall tubing, and just a bunch of knickknacks, really. Um, the bottom die is adjustable. You can see on these, these are inch and a half acne screws. So I can level the bottom die by these guys. It rides in this real simple track setup. There's a piece of three quarter inch flat bar. And then these guys grip it. Um, and there's a, a thin shim in there to give it just a little bit of play so it moves easily. And the same thing for this. You can see this, this flat bar is welded to the frame. And then this little gripper channel is bolted bolted to that um, so it's got about a four and a half inch stroke and then combined this has about three or four inches of movement as well so I can play with the spread between the two jaws or whatever you want to call them for different tooling generally I don't mess with this much once it's square it's square um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a pretty good machine. So it basically runs on compressed air and, and just 110. And the 110 just powers, it's hard to see in there, but there's just like a, uh, like a laptop power supply that gives 12 volts to run all these air valves because these are all 12 volts. I'll probably give a better explanation of all this when I rebuild it. Um, some of this is going to change. You see, it's got a pretty good throat depth. Um, I think this is 15 inches off the top of my head. And back here, you can see the um, backstops. So the backstops can slide on this this rail for different different widths, and then this this top piece right here clamps with those two bolts so you can slide it the length or the depth here and I have a one two three block bolted on right there and that's adjustable up and down to get closer um, if, if need be so it's a real simple machine you know there's nothing CNC or anything fancy about it it's all completely manual and manually adjusted but once it's set it's very repeatable. Um, I can bend a whole stack of bins and they are exactly the same. And basically once it's, once it's set once, you know, that's all you got to mess with. So I'll show, I'll show real quick bending apart. Thanks. See, hit the up button. And so that uses the air cylinders to raise the, the bed.
see, I still got my still got my foot on the pedal. It, it stops at the preset angle. So something that I didn't show. Something that was kind of a <laughs> kind of a pain to do is you know these are essentially bobble jacks. And so to release it, so this comes down, you've got to turn the valve. Well, I wanted to, uh, you know, do this as automated and remote, you know, with automation, I guess you'd say. So I got this little air cylinder and this little arm I built that, that clamps to the shaft. And uh, that's what controls opening and closing the valves. So when you hit the up, the ram up pedal, it puts air to one side or the other to release these valves. And then at the same time puts air to the cylinder to bring this down. I put the springs on um, just mostly uh, from the machine that's sitting and the, uh, like if the air is disconnected. Um, sometimes depending on what tooling you have in here, if you have a, a long piece, the weight will, will bring this down slowly. Um, and if you pull up on these guys, it can cause some aeration in there and stuff, and it's, that's no good. So I put these springs on basically um, just for balance and to keep this from creeping when it's not in use. Here's a better look at this little limit switch thing I built. So this arm is connected to that side, and the main frame here is connected to this side. And so if there's any difference between the two, it'll either hit this limit switch or this limit switch. And uh, the gap is adjustable with these little adjusters I made. It actually works pretty good. It's the, the resolution isn't quite good enough on these uh, limit switches to get it perfect, but so far it's working pretty good. So I'm gonna work on uh, dialing that in a little better. You see kind of a better view of the backstops. They slide along that, that track. And something I did on the first one, which I haven't done on this machine yet, is put a rail on the front side because sometimes it's handy to have your guy, your uh, backstop on the front or just like a, uh, you can make like a pad to support big material. That's that. Um, if, there's, if there's much interest, I would probably share the DXF files for this thing. Um, I had thought about building these as a kit, but it's just too complicated. Um, what this thing really needs is a real hydraulic system, but that's just, that's a lot of money. Um, it's a lot more than I want to spend on it and is I use it quite a bit, but not enough to justify that kind of money. I mean, with this whole control system now, I mean, these these jacks are like $100 each. And basically all the parts I bought on eBay. So I bought used air cylinders. These big ones, I don't even know what I spent on them, like $30 to $50 a piece probably. And then uh, a whole bunch of like truck airline hose and fittings. You know, all these valves and all that. I bought the cheapest ones I could find on eBay. So I think all, all told, I probably only have, I don't know, three or four thousand dollars in this. And uh, it's pretty cheap for a machine with this capability. Um, the biggest down, downside of it, you probably saw during that bend, is it's pretty slow. Um, every once in a while I'll bend hundreds of parts and it, it's pretty slow and monotonous that's the one big drawback of this thing it's really good for one-off stuff because it's pretty fast to set up um, but you know when you're just a small shop you can't afford a hundred thousand dollar press break you do what you got to do and so far it's done the job just fine um, my garage is a disaster, but I'll show kind of a quick walk around of what tools I use too. Um, so this is one of my 
one of my favorite tools. It's a modified Torchmate plasma table. Um, it started out as a two by two, so it was half the size. I built a new gantry that was two feet longer. So now I can put four foot by two foot material in, in it and cut larger parts, which is nice. I stuck with a small format machine just because a four by eight machine would just take up so much room in here and I rarely need to cut large parts. And I have friend, I have a friend with a full size table. So when I need something big, I, I just farm it out to him. That's my welding area. I've got an old dinosaur Miller, Millermatic 35. Uh, this thing's from the mid 80s, I believe. Um, I've had this about 20 years. It just runs and runs and runs. Super reliable, super consistent. Um, zero electronics inside of it. Just a great, great old machine. I got a kind of a cheaper uh, fixture table. You can see here I'm my off time, I've been uh, doing some more work on my turbo manifold setup. And then uh, I have an 80 gallon, five horse Husky air compressor. And that's about the minimum you can use if you're gonna use that press brake a lot. It does chew through a lot of air. And then a couple toolboxes. Uh, kind of a messy storage corner. I got a little bandsaw. It's a Grizzly. Not sure of the part number. You can see it there. But it's a, it's a pretty cool little saw. The If you want to cut miters, the base stays still and the head swings real easily and pretty accurately. I got a cheap Harbor Freight belt sander. And this was a horizontal bandsaw, a larger one that I... I got it was all broken but the machine still ran so i built a tripod for it and use it as a vertical bandsaw i've had that forever the thing works great i got the at the time this was the biggest drill press harbor freight sold this is got to be about 20 years old now as well and this nice old uh sear square body grinder this was my grandpa's um I don't know what the horsepower is claimed. You see it there. But this thing's got more power than modern bench grinders of the same capacity. This thing just goes. It's awesome. And I built a uh, homemade uh, 2x72 belt grinder. Kind of like a lot of my tools. They get built just good enough to work, but never quite finished. So I still need to build some other attachments and stuff for this. But... That thing works pretty awesome. It's got a two horsepower motor and uh, just fixed one speed, just on off. So far it's been good. Runs real, uh, real true, doesn't vibrate. And I built a, a real sturdy base. It's got rubber feet. Thing works pretty good. And I got a I think I've showed this in a video. JD squared tubing bender powered by another one of these Harbor Freight um, engine hoist jacks. Works pretty nice because now normally these are hand operated and they have to be mounted to the floor. This lets it be, uh, be mobile. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is it. It's about a uh, 24 by 36 foot shop. So back to this, if uh, anybody's curious about it, got questions or possibly wants the DXF files, um, let me know. Thanks for watching.